Dear learners, I welcome you all to the MOOC on Principles of Electrical Sciences. I am Dr. Anwar S. Siddiqui, Professor in Electrical Engineering, JMI, New Delhi. So in previous section, we have discussed single phase induction motor. And under single phase induction motor, we discussed methods of starting different types of motors with its torque speed characteristics. In this session, we would discuss, uh, I mean, these are the topics we are going to have in this session. Introduction, construction of synchronous generator, types of synchronous generator, Sally and pole synchronous generator, cylindrical rotor synchronous generator, difference between Sally and pole and cylindrical rotor generator, operating principle of synchronous generator, electrical frequency, generated voltage of synchronous generator, and finally, equivalent circuit. Introduction. Synchronous generators, or as we call them, alternators, are used to convert mechanical power derived from steam, gas, or hydraulic turbine to AC electrical power. In a synchronous generator, a DC current is applied to the rotor winding, producing a rotor magnetic field. As all of us know that in every winding, in every machine, there are two windings, one on the stator and one on the rotor. So this winding on the rotor is then turned by external means, producing a rotating magnetic field, which induces a three-phase voltage within the stator winding. Large AC power networks rely almost exclusively on synchronous generators. So whenever you go to the field, you will always find synchronous generators or alternators. Types of synchronous machines. As I told you, we have the synchronous generators through which we can convert the mechanical power to electrical power, or they are also known as alternators. Then we have synchronous motors. Uh, in synchronous motor, we convert the electrical energy to mechanical energy. And synchronous condensers. These are special synchronous motors uh, which work as uh, for power improvement as well. Types of windings on three-phase synchronous machines. Uh, first of them, uh, we have the armature winding. Armature winding on synchronous machine is similar to a stator winding of induction motor. So in this uh, machine, the armature winding is on the stator. Whereas if you recall, in case of induction motor, the uh, armature winding was on the rotor. Three-phase EMF is generated on armature winding. It absorbs or import AC power. Okay, when it absorbs, AC power, it is the motoring operation. It, uh, armature winding can deliver or export AC power. When it delivers the AC power, then it is the generator operation. Field winding. Field windings are wound over the rotor of synchronous machine. And field windings are connected to DC source. Main magnetic field is produced in field winding. So it always absorbs or imports DC power whether the machine is working as motor or generator. So DC power which is supplied to the field winding is always goes into the machine. Whereas the AC power as I have told you earlier, when the machine is working as generator, it will go out of the machine. And when the machine is working as motor, it will go into the armature. Thus, we can say that the synchron machine is also sometimes referred as doubly excited machine because we are exciting the field winding with the help of DC, whereas the stator winding, we have the AC, either AC going into the machine or AC going out of the machine. Then another type of winding which is there is damper winding. Damper windings are also used to damp out rotor oscillations to give the stable operation. Damper windings are similar to the compensated windings of DC machines. 
Now let us see the construction of synchronous generator. These are the basic parts of synchronous generator. We have the stator. On this stator, we put the three phase winding. Uh, over this uh, winding, we have the EC, AC EMF generated. Okay. Then the second component in the machine is rotor. The rotor of a synchronous machine is a large electromagnet. The magnetic poles can be either salient in which these, uh, the poles are uh, projected out of the surface or it can be non-salient construction. We'll see these detail later on. And the rotor material is chromium, nickel, molybdenum, steel, because it gives high tensile strength. When the uh, steam strikes the uh, turbine, so uh, very high speed uh, uh, steam is striking it, so it requires the large uh, mechanical strength. Uh, these are the pictures you can see, two types of uh, synchronous generators. As you can observe in the salient pole synchronous machine, the poles are projected out of the surface. And in between you have the uh, winding. Whereas in case of cylindrical rotor, you have the smooth surface. So this salient pole synchronous machines are normally used for low speed operation. Whereas cylindrical rotor machines are normally employed for high speed. So let us see the salient pole synchronous generator in somewhat more detail. A salient pole synchronous generator is distinguished from a round rotor machine by its constructional features of the field poles, which are projected out with a large interpolar air gap in which we put the uh, winding. This type of construction is commonly used in machines coupled to hydroelectrical turbines, which are running on inherently slow speed. So as I told you, this uh, salient pole synchronous generators are more suitable for low speed operation in which we are normally using the hydro turbines. And uh, this is the uh, cylindrical type of uh, construction. As you can observe in this diagram, you have the smooth surface. Okay. So these kind of uh, construction is more suitable for turbo generators or the steam turbine based generators because they are uh, operating at very high speeds. And as you can observe in the diagram as well, uh, the, the magnetic field, I mean, uh, in this case is a smooth around the machine. Cylindrical rotor synchronous generator, some features of this cylindrical rotor type of synchronous generator. The cylindrical rotor generator is normally used for very high speed operation and which are uh, there in the steam turbine driven alternators. We call them the turbo generators. The machines are built in different ratings, starting from 10 MVA. It goes up to 1500 MVA. The cylindrical rotor type machines has a uniform length in all direction, giving a cylindrical shape to the rotor and thereby provide uniform flux cutting in all directions. The rotor in this case consists of a smooth, solid steel cylinder having a number of slots along its outer periphery for putting the field coils there. So the field windings are situated in it, in these slots. Cylindrical rotor synchronous generators the cylindrical rotor generators are normally designed for two poles type of machines. And as we know that the speed is directly proportional to frequency and inversely proportional to number of poles in the machine. So NS, which is the synchronous speed, is equal to 120F over P. Normal power frequency is 50 Hertz. And if you are keeping the number of poles equal to 2, then this 120 multiplied by 50 divided by 2 will result into 3000 RPM, a very high speed. 
so you have to use a cylindrical rotor synchronous generator for such a high speed and if you increase the number of poles let us say it is 4 then this ns is equal to 120f over p will give you a speed of 1500 rpm once again quite high speed so a cylindrical rotor type of synchronous generator will be more suitable for it we would not use the salient pull type of uh, generators here the cylindrical rotor synchronous generator does not have any projections coming out from the surface of the rotor and which helps it to be used for high speeds otherwise if the poles are projected out you will face the uh, wind resistance there okay so a lot of uh, losses will result the center polar area is provided with slots for housing the field windings as we have already seen in the diagram the field coils are so arranged around these poles that flux density is maximum on the polar central line and gradually falls away as we move out toward the periphery the cylindrical rotor type machine gives better balance and quieter operation noise free with lesser windage losses this windage uh, windage losses are nothing but the losses because of the air friction wind uh, friction so if you are having the smooth surface there nothing is projected out the uh, res uh, wind uh, resistance will decrease and so the losses will also decrease now let us have a quick uh, comparison between these two type of construction salient pole and cylindrical rotor so in salient pole type of machines we have the non uniform air gap whereas in cylindrical rotor as you can observe you have the uniform air gap okay. xd is the d axis uh, synchronous reactance and xq is the q axis synchronous reactance so in case of salient pole xd is not equal to xq whereas in case of cylindrical rotor since we are having the uniform air gap xd is equal to xq is equal to synchronous reactance xs okay uh, all these features make the salient pole more suitable for low speed operation whereas cylindrical rotor they are preferred for high speed operations so in case of salient pole the number number of poles is generally more than 4 whereas in cylindrical rotor the number of poles is less than or equal to 4 poles more than 4 means the speed is slow and poles less than 4 or equal to 4 means quite high speed so cylindrical rotor is preferred for uh, high speed therefore the construction will have poles either 4 or less than 4 now in case of salient pole under faulty conditions there are more chances of deformation of rotor due to non uniform air gap as i have told you it will face the air friction air resistance okay so there are chances of deformation of rotor in case of cylindrical rotor under faulty conditions there are less chances of deformation because you are having the smooth surface and uniform air gap there in case of salient pole the output waveform is not sinusoidal there are more harmonics and the shape is distorted whereas in case of cylindrical rotor the output waveform is more or less sinusoidal in salient pole we have a small core length large diameter to accommodate large number of poles whereas in cylindrical rotor we have long length a small diameter to limit large centrifugal forces due to high speed okay now let us see the operating principle of synchronous generator as i have told you uh, if you are uh, doing it for a three phase uh, construction uh, here we have shown the three phases as phase a phase b and phase c and this is a two pole rotor you can very well see that uh, these two poles north and south poles these are projected out 
and you have very small air gap between uh, this and the uh, stator. Whereas in the interpolar region, you can observe there is large air gap. So in this, you are having the non-uniform air gap. Okay. Uh, the field winding is put on the rotor, as you can observe, and we are giving the DC excitation. And this DC excit excitation can be controlled by varying this voltage VF, the field winding voltage. And one more thing you can observe in this diagram is that the displacement between the three phases is 120 degrees. So you have a balanced three phase. Now, uh, since uh, to produce the EMF, we require the rotation, rotating magnetic field. So this uh, rotor will be uh, moved by some prime mover at high speed and you will get the required uh, rotating magnetic field. Uh, I have shown the uh, gr uh, related graph as well. Uh, these three lines, sinusoids, blue, red, and yellow, they represent the different phases. The red one is phase A, then yellow one, as you can observe, we have named it phase B, then you have blue as phase C. And you can observe in graphs as well that the relative displacement between these phases is 120 degree. You can observe that the maximum of phase A is displaced from the maximum of phase B by 120 degree. Similarly, the maximum of phase B is displaced from maximum of uh, phase C by 120 degree. So this is the three phase supply. Now operating principle, I have told you, uh, you are having two poles, north and south poles, and then you have the binding shown there. In this diagram, we have shown a single conductor place under the magnetic field, which is produced by two stationary poles. Poles are north and south. Now, as the uh, we move the we rotate this uh, this rotor with the help of prime mover, you will get the required rotating magnetic field. Now, electrical frequency. Electrical frequency produced is logged or synchronized to the mechanical speed of rotation of synchronous generator. I have told you this Nm is the mechanical speed of rotor in RPM. And frequency, which we, are, we have written as F suffix E, it is the electrical frequency in hertz. So it is directly proportional to Nm, the rotor speed. P is the number of poles. So if you observe in this equation, the frequency is linked or synchronized with the speed of the rotor. That's why the name is given as synchronous uh, machines. In synchronous machines, these are basically constant speed machines. Uh, I mean, P is already fixed when you have done the construction, either it is two or four or whatever it is. Nm is the rotor speed and rotor speed you will uh, adjust in such a way that you are getting the required frequency. In our country, the power frequency is 50 hertz. So accordingly, you will choose the uh, rotor speed. So these two quantities are linked with each other. Or in other words, we can say they are synchronized. That's why we have given the name as synchronous machine. Now let us see the uh, generator voltage equation. The generator, generated voltage of synchronous generator is given by this equation one, which is Eg is equal to Kc into Fe into phi. This Kc is the synchronous machine constant. Okay. Fe is the electrical frequency in hertz, whereas phi is the flux in machine. Now, since the material of the rotor and stator is steel, so it will, you will observe some kind of saturation there. Normally, the, the shape of the air gap flux is a straight line, which we have shown in this diagram by dotted lines. 
but because of the saturation you can observe that actual OCC which is nothing but open circuit characteristics of the machine it is uh, after some time it gets saturated it's not increasing with respect to the field current initially it is proportional to the field current but after some time the saturation will occur and it gets aligned to the x axis now let us see the equivalent circuit of this synchronous machine the internal voltage e produced in a machine is not normally the voltage that appears at the terminal of the generator what are the differences we are going to discuss that the only time this e is same as the output voltage of a phase is when there is no armature current flowing in the machine no armature current mean there will not be any kind of voltage drop in that case you will uh, have this uh, e same as the terminal voltage there are a number of factors that cause the difference between e and v terminal voltage the distortion of the air gap magnetic field by the current flowing in the stator called the armature reaction actually as i have told you already uh, there is a uh, field winding which you have put on the rotor and you are giving the dc supply to this rotor and it is being rotated with the help of prime mover and you are getting the main rotating magnetic field but since the armature windings are also short circuited you have the induced emf in the armature winding it will also produce its own magnetic field now this secondary magnetic field interact with the main magnetic field and because of this interaction there will be some uh, distortion so that is known as the armature reaction so armature reaction is the effect of stator uh, field stator winding field on the main field the self inductance of the armature coil these are the factors which make uh, uh, make this uh, induce emf and terminal voltage different another factor is the resistance of the armature coil then you have the effect of salient pole rotor shapes now this is the equivalent circuit you are observing here we have the ef which is the induce emf in the machine okay then you have the armature reactance jx and then you have the armature reaction as well okay and together these reactances are combined and we call them the synchronous reactance and then you have the armature resistance also connected there so obviously these three factors will lead to some voltage drop and you can see if the current is flowing in the direction shown here clockwise direction then this terminal voltage vt will be slightly less than the generated emf i'm talking uh, this in terms of the generator when you are uh, operating the machine as a motor then the direction of armature current will reverse in that case you are receiving the ac power in the stator and you will produce the uh, mechanical power out of the rotor so students in today's session we have discussed the construction of synchronous generator there were two types of uh, construction we talked about them one of them was the uh, salient type of construction and the second one was the non salient type of construction in case of the uh, salient type of construction you have the uh, rotor post projected out okay so you have the non uniform magnetic field there in that construction whereas in the uh, in the other type of construction Uh, you have the smooth cylindrical rotor and even the uh, air gap was uniform so difference between salient pole and cylindrical rotor we have emphasized and we have explained through the graphs and diagrams operating principle of synchronous generator we have seen synchronous generator is that machine in which Uh, you are getting the mechanical power into the rotor you are rotating the uh, rotor on which you have put the uh, field winding with the help of a prime mover and through this rotation basically you are inputting the mechanical power into the machine and then the electrical power this mechanical power is converted into the electrical power 
in the uh, stator, armature winding which is put on the stator and you take out the electrical power from the armature winding. Whereas in case of the synchronous motor, it is just the opposite. You are giving the electrical power to the armature winding, so input is electrical power. And then because uh, its construction because uh, based on the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, your rotor uh, will start rotating and by through this rotation basically you are converting the electrical input into the mechanical power and that mechanical power is taken out. You connect the shaft to some load and that load will start rotating. So you are converting the electrical power to mechanical power in synchronous motor whereas in synchronous generator you are convert, converting the mechanical power to electrical power. Generated voltage of synchronous generator, it, is, uh, it depends on the uh, speed of the machine and since these are the uh, constant speed machines, so the generated voltage will al almost remain constant. So that is the feature because of this we always prefer uh, synchronous machine when we want to use the machine as a generator. Okay. If you go to the field, most of the time you will find that the uh, uh, motor is either induction type or uh, DC uh, motor because uh, they have got the good feature you can control the speed there which is not possible in case of synchronous motor. But synchronous motor has got one uh, spe special uh, 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 use in the field and over excited synchronous motor acts as a capacitor so you can improve the power factor whereas under excited synchronous motor acts as an inductor it absorbs the reactive power so this machine uh, synchronous machine when it is used for power factor improvement we call it the synchronous condenser and we have already uh, gone through the equivalent circuit also. Hope you are able to learn these topics. Now friends, in the next session, we would discuss the phasor diagram, parallel operation of synchronous generator, operating principle of synchronous motor. We'll go into some detail. And why synchronous motor is not self-starting. We'll discuss this aspect as well. The starting met method of synchronous motor. There are uh, various methods through which you can make the synchronous motor self-starting. So we'll discuss those things and the application of synchronous motor. Thank you very much.